Yes, it is that time. Has anybody else been like waiting for Therapy Thursday? I see the tags, the emails, I can't wait. Therapy Thursday is such a blessing to my life. Pastor Isaac's message, Jerry, your message. I'm just so honored to serve you. I do not take this lightly. It's just like week after week. It's such a confirmation that when God was really putting this in my heart at the end of 2021, that my people need healing on the inside. Of course, give them biblical intelligence, but I need them to heal on the inside so they're not triggered by my instructions. So come on in the room. I'm so glad and so honored to serve you on this beautiful Thursday afternoon. If you could just tag somebody, you know how we do. We like to start a, an, an encouraged thread. Tag somebody. I see you. Thank you for showing up for therapy. Look at you at Ashley. Look at you at John being intentional with your spiritual growth and your inward healing. I'm so proud of you. Let's do it. Up and down the thread. Encourage somebody. I'm excited and I'm not going to be before you long. I'm not going to be before you long, but there is something that is beating on my heart that I want to really, really dive into on tonight. Uh, there's this statement. There's this statement that has been going around. In fact, I remember hearing this statement as early as seven years old. Seven years old, I heard this statement. In fact, let's go a little deeper. Before I was born, this statement existed. Before you were born, before your mother ever met your father, or however the situation went down to get you here, before your mother ever heard a doctor tell her to push so that she could birth you in this earth realm, this statement existed. I've heard it amongst my colleagues while I was in college. I've heard it amongst my neighbors in my community. I've even heard this statement amongst believers, this three destiny crippling words if we come into agreement with them. Three destiny crippling words, this statement, I fear failure. I wonder is anybody watching this who has ever said those words or you feel like that? I fear failure. What if I fail? I fear failure. I fear failure. I fear failing. And I just feel like I'm a man that has been compelled. I'm a man that has been commissioned by the Holy Spirit on tonight to give us another perspective to reframe and redefine failure. We're going to reframe, redefine failure and come back Fear. We're going to go to war with fear because watch this. Many times the fear of failure is worse than failure itself. Already come out. Did y'all hear what I just said? Many times the fear, meaning the perspective, the outlook, the mentality, the, 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 the way we view it, the fear of failure in itself <laughs> is worse than then failure, just, just, just the fear, the grippling torment of fear in itself many times is worse than failure itself because failure is not defeat. Failure is not even fatal. Quitting is. One more time. Failure is not even defeat. Quitting is. It's quitting on the things that God wants us to complete that's getting in the way of us experiencing peace. Failure is not defeat, quitting is. So if that be true, this means that failure and failed are not twins. Did y'all hear me? If this be true, failure and failed are not twins. They are not one and the same because failure is the one who attempted to gain new strength. But failed is when I don't even use my strength to make an attempt. This is so good. Did y'all hear me? Failure is the attempt to get new strength. But failed is when I don't even use my strength to make an attempt. 
I'm going to take it a little deeper. You don't get growth without failure. Every bodybuilder, any person who is passionate about fitness, they will tell you there are times when we push ourselves to go towards muscle failure. Because when we go towards muscle failure, that positions us to get new strength. Without this discomfort, without this strain, without this regimen, without this soreness, without this discomfort, there's some muscles I won't get. So I have to push because failure is just you attempting to gain new strength, but failed is when I'm not even using my strength to attempt anything. What if I were to tell you that the greatest risk is to not take one? I told you I'm coming out reframing, trying to redefine failure. What if I told you that the greatest risk is for us to not even take one? Growth requires failure. And I want to give you another perspective. This is something that was really, really challenging um, our singles ministry on Monday night. I said, okay, this is something we need to consider. Sometimes what failure really is, is succeeding the most in what matters the least. Because if I get the cars, if I get the possessions, if I get the platform, if I get the power, if I get the status, if I get the notoriety, but I do not do what I was born to do, I failed. So I challenged him. I said, okay, what is success? How do you accurately and appropriately define success? And I want you to find four or five biblical passages to support it from the Bible that this is successful. What is successful? Because many times what the culture considers successful, kingdom considers failed. Failed. What's success? What's success? What is successful for Jerry might be failed if you try it. What's successful for you might be me failing because I'm not supposed to do what you're supposed to do. I'm only supposed to do what God has called me to do. This is why comparison is dangerous because you could be comparing yourself to somebody's success that if you try to emulate, you will be considered failed. So good, y'all. Failure and failed are not the same thing. Therefore, my definition of success is me occupying each and every room that God ordained for me to occupy while I'm here in time for his glory. My definition of success is for me to complete and fulfill the reason I have been born. Remember, I told us this many times. Purpose is a fixer. Purpose fixes problems. So success is when you have fixed the problem. Whatever problem you were supposed to fix, you fixed it. That is a successful life. For many of us, 2023 will be considered successful if you heal this year. That's your success. Others of us, 2023 will be considered successful if you read the word each and every day versus grabbing your phone and giving your morning to Facebook, IG, YouTube, Hulu versus giving your morning to God. You don't know what you just blocked when you just prayed. And God has been, I feel like I'm talking to somebody. God has been telling you, God has been telling somebody, you are spending my time binging seasons. Binging series, that's my time. Nothing is wrong with it, but for what I need to do in your life, you need to upgrade your devotion. That's the definition of success that I feel God has given me that I wanna share with you. These, these three destiny, crippling words. I fear failure. I fear failure. I, I, I can't do that. I, I, I'm not smart enough to do that. I'm not pretty enough to do that. I can't do that. That's impossible. You want me to tell you something that I'm learning in real time, especially as our church is growing and more leaders are coming? There's something that I'm noticing. Many times we are mislabeling anything that's difficult as impossible. 
<laughs> we mislabel difficulty as impossible. Man, can nobody do that? No, it's just going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be hard. It's just going to require for us to practice more. It's just going to require for us to get up earlier. It's just going to require for us to be more excellent with our gift, more excellent with our business, more excellent with our verbiage. It's not that it's impossible. We've been mislabeling difficulty as impossibility. I want to help us on tonight to stop surrendering our mind to terror. Stop surrendering our perspective to terror. Stop surrendering the outlook to terror. Many of us right now, under the sound of my voice, we cannot move because of fear, love them back because of fear, love period because of fear, try because of fear, start the podcast because of fear god told you to start the podcast back in 2018 before it was even as popular as it is now because god has a methodology of giving you a forward instruction before it is needed do you have bible yes i do while you are here when you have wells that you did not dig when you have vineyards that you did not plant god is talking to them about canaan the promised land while they're in the wilderness, while they're in the desert. But fear won't allow us to obey. Terror won't allow us to trust. So I can't move because of fear. I can't write the book because of fear. I can't write the psalm because of fear. I fear failure. So many times we fear an outcome that we can't control. <clears throat> That's really what it is. I fear that this outcome could go in a way that I cannot control. But God is trying to remind us on tonight, I did not give you that spirit. Who am I talking to? I did not give you that spirit. Why have you allowed fear to become your therapist and you can't obey me without first booking a session with it? I didn't give you that spirit. The outcome belongs to me. The results, that belongs to me. The width of it, that belongs to me. The impact of it, that belongs to me. Tomorrow, that belongs to me. Could it be you fear failure because you fear an outcome that you can't control? So really, if we were to compartmentalize another definition of what the fear of failure is, failure is really us getting new muscles or it's fearing God directing your steps in a way that you didn't desire. Did y'all hear me? Another perspective of the fear of failure is failure is me getting new muscles or it's me fearing God directing my steps in a way that I did not desire. Let me give you a Bible. I want you to see this. Proverbs chapter 16, verse nine says, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. Hmm. I wonder how many of us are calling something failure when it was really the Lord ordering your steps. Next passage, Proverbs 20, verse 24. It says, the Lord directs our steps. So why try to understand everything along the way? <laughs> He's running this. Why are you trying to understand well, what's going to happen if and how is this going to be? You will torment yourself trying to be God. The Lord directs our steps. So why try to understand everything along the way? And this is my favorite one. We're going to park and really just place our time right here for the remainder of the time that we have for this session. Psalms 37, verse 23 through 24. It says, the Lord directs the steps of the godly, not the wicked. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall. I want to just read that part one more time. He delights in every detail, every part 
every intricate detail of your life. If you do not think that the Lord cares about details, go study and recognize how detailed he wanted them to build his temple. God cared about every intricate part of how you're going to build my temple. So what makes you think that he doesn't care about every detail of our lives? Though they stumble, they will never fall for the Lord holds them by the hand. A clause of emphasis and the segment of scripture that we're really going to park on is the latter part of verse 24 in Psalms verse 37, Psalms chapter 37, where it says, they will never fall. Why? For the Lord holds them by the hand. So to say, I fear failure is saying, God, will you really hold me? God, will you really be with me? God, do you, do you really care about every intricate detail? And if so, why haven't you done nothing yet? God, will you be with me when I do this? He'll hold our hand. So to fear failure is to ask God, would you really hold my hand? Or God, I don't like the steps that you're directing because the steps that you're directing aren't going the way that I plan for it to go. Because if I be honest, God, I want your will my way. Ouch. God, I want your will my way. This is what I'm learning rather quickly in ministry. <laughs> this is something I'm learning. We hate to be a freshman again. We hate, man, kind. We hate to be a freshman again. I don't want to start over. That's what it means. I don't want to be a freshman again. But truthfully, you can't get promoted unless you are a, there it is, y'all got it. You can't get promoted unless you are a freshman again. You were once the big man on campus as an eighth grader, but the only way you could embrace promotion is you have to be a freshman in high school. You have to be a freshman again. You were the big man on campus as a senior in high school, but the only way that you could be promoted is you have to be a freshman again in college. To be a freshman means I'm positioning myself to be promoted. Let's go a little deeper. One is the number that is always going to be a freshman again on another, on another level. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 11 is just one on another level. 21 is just one on another level. 31 is just one on another level. So the way in numerical information, the way for number one to go up is it has to be a freshman again. This is so good. 51, you're a freshman again. 61, you're a freshman again. But while you're a freshman, you're going up. So to despise starting over is to say, I want to be an old man or an old woman who is still wearing my senior letterman jacket. <laughs> I don't want to start over, so I want to die wearing my senior letterman jacket. But truthfully, to be a freshman again is to be promoted. What do we need to learn again about God? What do we need to learn again about our faith? Because sometimes we're afraid due to ignorance. And what God is saying is, I didn't give you that spirit. To be a freshman again requires growth. To be a freshman again is the only way you can get promoted. I want to help us to stop surrendering our mind to terror. God, right now, we are coming before you saying, forgive us. Forgive us for being so fearful that we view your word and your principles as an elective. God, to be like you is to be fearless. The only fear that we wanna possess is the fear of you, the reverential fear. 
Help us, God, to be individuals who trust you versus allowing our minds to cause us to listen to the spirit of fear because you didn't give us that spirit. Whatever it is that you're asking for us to do, whatever instruction that you've been putting in our heart, whatever breakup is needed, whatever podcast needs to be started, whatever we need to birth or even end, would you give us the boldness to do it so that we won't die wearing our senior letterman jacket? because we were unwilling to be a freshman again. I pray for every man and every woman who is watching this, who has been battling with torment due to the spirit of free, due to the spirit of fear, set us free on tonight. So that as we look back over the course and quality of our life, we will say it was this session that caused for me to operate and experience freedom. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody who agrees with that prayer, could you put in the room Amen. Amen. That's good, y'all. I'm not afraid to be a freshman again. This is so good. I want everybody to put this in the room in all caps, okay? Can I get us to say, fear, you will no longer have the final say. My steps are ordered. <laughs> this is so good. I'm reframing and redefining your perspective of fear. One more time in the room, fear, all caps, you will no longer have the final say. My steps are ordered. My good. What type of freedom would you experience if every time you got disappointed, if every time it didn't work, if every time it didn't go the way that you thought it would go, you said, this isn't failure. This is my steps being ordered. Though they stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. I was about seven, either six or seven years old, and we just moved into this house. And the house had a pool in the backyard, so you could just imagine as a seven-year-old, a pool, turn up! I mean, I'm just excited. And my mom, she was like, okay, she was talking to my father. She said, this is what we're gonna have to do. If this is going to be the house that we have, you gotta teach our son how to swim. So my, my father did it. Every day, um, probably for a month and a half, he would put a life jacket on me and we would go in the backyard and out swim. And so one day, uh, he lost his mind. He told me to take off the life jacket and jump off the diving board. Now the pool was about two feet to 12 feet. So the diving board was on the deep end. That's a whole word, deal with that later. Diving board was on the deep end. And I always stayed in the two to three feet and you know, he would teach me how to backstroke and all that stuff. And he just lost his mind one day. He said, all right, take off the life jacket and jump in the deep end. And I said, so you want me to commit suicide? You, you want to go to jail for murder? That, that's what you want to do. You, you want me to commit suicide? I'm not taking off my life jacket. Now, I jumped off the diving board with my life jacket on, but I'm not gonna take my life jacket off. Just take off the life jacket and jump off the diving board. Watch this, y'all. I had more faith in the life jacket than the father. <laughs> he was telling me, Jay, if you go under, daddy's gonna jump in and he save you. I'm not taking, look, I'm not taking my life jacket off. I wonder, is there anybody watching this who has life jacket Christianity? You know that safe, casual Christianity? Ooh, your neck. Is there anybody watching this where you, you like to have it safe? I'm not gonna do what God asked me to do because what if I drown? I'm not gonna apologize to my mother because what if it doesn't go the way that I think it should go? What if I drown. I fear failure. I fear the outcome that I've conjured up in my own head. I'm not going to go back to school because what if I fail? I fear drowning and going back and forth with my father, back and forth with my father. I don't know if you're going to save me because this is what the fear of failure does. It hands you a script of lies a script of fraudulence 
that you memorize and recite so that you can be cast in the film of missing an opportunity. One more time, the fear, the fear of failure, what it does is it lies to you, hands you a script of fraudulence for you to memorize so that you can be cast in the film of missing an opportunity. The reason I'm not taking off my life jacket is because I already know how this is gonna go. I'm gonna jump in, go under, blue, blue, under the water, you gonna try to save me, but I'm gonna be going down faster than you swim, and I'm gonna die. I already have the full out failure, script, movie, cinema in my mind. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I already have this worked out in my head. I already had a conversation with myself. And maybe that's the problem. We're having more conversations with ourselves than listening to the conversation of the Holy Spirit. Mm. I wonder is anybody watching this that wants to keep on the life jacket of safe Christianity. So instead of experiencing a 12 foot blessing, I'm gonna argue with the Father and be content with settling in two feet. <laughs> Did y'all hear me? Instead of the 12 foot blessing, the experience that I could have, I'd rather stay safe with my life jacket on in two feet. What depths is God calling you to, but you've gotten comfortable with the shallow end? Hmm. What oceans does God want to crack, but you've gotten comfortable with ponds? What reservoir does God have for you to experience, but you've gotten comfortable with cups, life jacket, Christianity? I wonder what best-selling author is watching me right now. Though we don't know about your book because you fear failure, life jacket, Christianity. I wonder what man has his fiance waiting for years because he fears maybe she'll cheat on me like my last girlfriend did. I fear failure, life jacket, Christianity. I wonder what amazing artist, I'm talking to somebody, is watching this, but we don't hear your song, nor do we hear your gifts or your production, because I fear failure. I'm content with life jacket, Christianity. But here's something my father told me that I never forgot, I wanna tell you. Life jackets are made for training, not living. This is so good, y'all. Life jackets are made for training, not living. Have you fell in love with the training wheels when God wants to give you an automobile? Another method of transportation that can get you there faster, but you fear the new method. So you embrace the training wheels. God is trying to speak to us this afternoon and remind you, I didn't give you that spirit. I didn't give you that spirit. See, I want you to see how fear operates. Because remember, fear, many times, the fear of failure is worse than failure in itself. So there's this chart that I made that I want you to see on how fear starts. The first thing fear does is it mixes a lie with truth. First thing, it mixes a lie with truth. You're jumping in the water 12 feet without your life jacket. You could drown, but you won't. Because remember, I will hold them by the hand. You could drown, yeah, it's true, I could. And that's what fear does, it tells you what could happen. And so many times we traffic more in the could versus what God said he would. First thing fear does is it mixes a lie with truth. Why? Because number two, it wants to torment you with second guessing. Then after it torments you with second guessing, it wants to then manipulate your perspective. Why? Because after your perspective has been manipulated, everything you see now is a giant. Because after you see that as a giant, then you're gonna retreat. This is so good. Fear, fear speaks the language of lies. It lies by mixing truth with a lie. 
so that you'll believe more of the lie part than the truth. Then after that, it torments you with second guessing. What if, what if, what if, what if? Now your perspective is manipulated. Now the thing that you're looking at is such a giant, it's the Goliath designed to get you to retreat. <laughs> That's how fear operates. And a lot of us are living under the influence of fear, making choices under the influence of fear because fear has children. And as children go by the name of anxiety, overthinking and phobias. Fear has children who go by the name of anxiety, overthinking and phobias. In fact, fear in the Greek is phobos. It's where we get the word phobias. This is what fear desires to do. It desires to get us to believe in something, but both faith and fear demand for you to believe in something. The opposite of fear is not faith though, it's sight. Is sight. Fear always traffics in what you see and what you saw. Please hear me. Fear traffics the most in what you see or what you saw. What you see with your eyes or what you see in your head. What you see or what you saw. What you saw will happen to them and what you see might happen to you. Are y'all catching this wordplay? Fear operates on what you see or what you saw. See, saw. Huh. Are you on a see saw in your emotions because of what you saw or have seen? See saw fear traffics and what we see or what we see or what we saw to keep you on a see saw of obedience. I might obey, I might not. I might listen, I might not. I might try, I might not. I'm on a see saw. The greatest risk is to never take one. Fear, fear, fear designed to get us to shrink back, go back, think back, so that we'll never experience the promised land. The giant of Goliath for David was his promotion. <laughs> that was an announcement to the world, a new king is on the scene. What giant are you running from? Because you could be running from your promotion in disguise. So I wanna give you a few points. I already gave you point number one. Point number one was fear traffics and what you see or what you saw. That's the first thing. Fear only can operate in what you give your vision to or what you envision in your mind. That's it. What I see or what I saw. So now, due to what I see or what I saw, I'm tormented. My perspective has changed. It's made it in a giant. It's made it a giant. And I'm running from what God wants me to run to. Number two, Fight hypothetical with historical. I want us to see this. Psalms 34, verse four, the psalmist says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. What I see could get me to engage in fear, but who I seek can deliver me from all my fears. This is so good, y'all. Knowing the God of my history, knowing the God of my future, knowing the God of my present, I can fight hypothetical with his historical. I tried to get us to understand this a few therapy Thursdays ago. This is how you war fear in your mind. Whatever what if it gives you, hypothetical, fight it on, fight it with God's historical. Number three, surrendered wheels leads to ordered steps. Whatever didn't work out, my steps are ordered. I didn't get the position, my steps are ordered. I didn't get the offer, my steps are ordered. I didn't get approved, my steps are ordered. But my will must be surrendered. And a lot of people are expecting, ugh, a lot of people are expecting God for them to bless what he's not authoring because your will is not surrendered. Remember, way up in our, our text that we read in Proverbs, it says the Lord directs our steps. So why try to understand everything along the way? And then Proverbs 16 verse nine, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. He determines our steps. So it's when I get to a place that my steps have already been determined. I'm just seeking God's will and surrendering my will to his 
so that I could trust every step that he's ordering. Number four, a mind-blowing blessing must be given an opportunity. This is so good, y'all. A mind-blowing blessing. What do you want God to blow your mind in? You got to give him an opportunity to step in. Peter, if you don't give me an opportunity to show you I could defy gravity and have you walk on water, you'll never experience a mind-blowing miracle. What aren't you experiencing? Because your faith isn't giving it an opportunity. A mind-blowing blessing must be given an opportunity. I have to write the book for God to blow my mind. I have to practice and beat my craft and record the song for God to blow my mind with the results. Give him something to bless. Give him something. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just give me your two fish and five loaves. I can't feed the multitudes without your two fish and your five loaves. And lastly, they will never fall for the Lord holds them by hand must be your bullets. That that has to be your ammo. Whatever I'm facing, whatever difficulty I'm encountering, I have to always remember the Lord's holding me. The Lord's with me. The Lord has me. So the fear of failure is either God giving my faith some new muscles or it's him ordering my steps. And my prayer on the night was as you reflect on this, you will actually have ammunition to war against the spirit of fear for every time he tries to talk you out of what God wants to talk you into. God, help us to be individuals who understand that our life is truly in your hands. You order our steps and you hold us. Help us to trust in you because our lifeguard walks on water. You'll never let us drown. In Jesus' name, amen.